the day that Putin just backed out of the nuclear treaty publicly, which is not good. With Joe Biden going to yes. Kiev and pledging his undying love to, and I'm going to say this, which is very painful. I think Zelensky is a complete menace. Why do you think that? He's romantic. He's telegenic. He's brave. Uh, we can talk about whether he got set up in a coup or you know who he really is. He was an actor, et cetera, et cetera. But at some point, I think I heard him. I had to go back to like the Russian and Ukrainian speeches in order to try to. I don't speak much Russian. I don't speak any Ukrainian, but they're closely related languages. And he calls for like pre preventivni udari, like preventative strikes. I'm like, huh? You know, this is a while. This is a while ago. And I thought, why is this person allowed to address Congress? You have somebody who, and, and I want to be very clear about this. Um, I really find it disgusting what Vladimir Putin did uh, invading Ukraine. But if you look historically at the killing and the borders of Eastern and Central Europe, they have gone back and forth like Nobody's business. When you ask somebody like me, uh, an American Ashkenazi Jew, where did your family come from? You always get the same weird response. It's like, oh, it was a part of Belarusia that went back and forth between Poland, Ukraine, Moldova, mm. you know, Lithuania, because it's fluid, right? And so when we say, you know, we, we, we respect the territorial integrity of Ukraine, we were fighting right now in Lvov, like the Ukrainians were fighting in Lvov, eight seconds by hypersonic missile from Article 5 territory since 1999 in Poland. And I realized how crazy we got. Um, I was in Providence, Rhode Island with my son, and I get this alert on my phone, and it says, two people are dead in Poland uh, w with a presumptive strike by a Russian missile. I'm thinking, did, did I read two Polish people dead in an Article 5 full NATO member since 1999 with a Russian missile, because I knew we were fighting way too close to this border. Now, by the way, if I say Lvov, everyone's going to correct me and say, no, no, Eric, it's Lviv. It's like, no, these, spit, these cities all have multiple pronunciations. I, I always thought of Lvov was a Polish city, not a Ukrainian city. And ironically, I believe Lvov is the birthplace of Stanislaw Ulam, who came up with the Teller Ulam thermonuclear design. So we're talking about some of the world's smartest people on some of the world's bloodiest, most disgusting, most beautiful land. You know, I, have you have you ever been to Ukraine? No. So my family basically is scattered. You know, was scattered throughout the shtetls of Ukraine, and I've been over there in eight, in eighty nine. We Americans do not understand Central and Eastern Europe, period, the end. And for us to be making these commitments and not understanding how Russians think and how Ukrainians think and how Poles think and how the fighting works, I don't think we know what we're doing. I think we're creating a doomsday machine. And I, the reason that we, you know, it's not like Zelensky isn't wronged by Putin. It's not like um, he's not charismatic. He has one of the greatest Bruce Willis lines of all time. When we ask to evacuate him, he says, I need ammunition, not a ride. You know, that thing yeah. makes us, yeah, yeah. I want that. Right. And then there's like house to house fighting, the way all the World War II enthusiasts think. They, they tend not to think about Nagasaki and Hiroshima. They like the, the tactical stuff with all the, you know, which bridge got, got taken out over which river and how did we do this and that. So it's very romantic to people who are like World War II addicts. We do not realize how deep the trouble we're courting is. And I don't think we realize how dangerous it is. If we are going to, every time there's a border dispute, go to a thermonuclear stand, you know, standoff, it's just Russian roulette with smaller and smaller numbers of empty chambers. And I don't know what this is. I don't know whether we have 30 years to play this game or three or three months, but I learned that day last year in 2022, um, nobody around me in Providence, Rhode Island was reacting. Everybody was just going about, it was like a normal day. It's like, 
I'm, I'm increasingly, Joe, believing that I am sane and that the world is crazy. And normally I take that as a cue that maybe I need to get some sleep. No, I think we're actually just going crazy. I think that those of us who actually get how risky this is need to speak up because it's not fun. The entire apparatus will tell you that you're soft on Putin and you're an appeasing Chamberlain uh, wannabe. And it's like bullshit. Right now, you don't realize in 2004, we let Latvia and Lithuania into NATO membership. And I remember thinking at the time, what the hell are we doing? It's not like I don't understand that we want to protect them. It's not like I don't understand that you want to say that they're independent nations. But these were former Soviet republics. And there's two ways of thinking about it. You can put on one set of glasses and say, well, these are nations that get to decide what they want and who's to tell them what to do. And then there's another thing called spheres of influence, where it's like, that's the Russian sphere of influence. If you are not playing with both of these sets of lenses, you're not playing the game. And the number of people who just have one set of these glasses on, right? They're only seeing the infrared or they're only seeing the ultraviolet. It's like, no, you, you need to oscillate back and forth and understand what you're doing. So I think, I think Zelensky, and I'm scared to say this because I know I'm going to get just nothing but hate. We created a situation by pretending that we didn't understand the spheres of influence glasses. We very well understand the sovereignty glasses. And we are now creating a doomsday machine that we do not understand. And the world is going to go multipolar, and we don't have the skill to play this game, period. Do you think part of the problem is that we're... The, the amount of people that have actually gone to war in this country. Mm. First of all, there's there's people that are in the army or in all the armed forces. They're, they're volunteers. Everyone volunteers. There's no draft. There's no um, national requirement to join the military like there is in Israel and like there is in South Korea and many other countries. We... The, the people that have experience with the war are the ones that are telling you this is dangerous. People like yourself are telling us this is dangerous, but to the rest of the world, to the rest of this country, there's a real problem with day-to-day -day existence because day-to-day -day existence is tricky and it, it gives you parameters which you exist in, but they're not real. They're not real. They're not real. You, they're only real right now. And if you invite war, you now are like these videos that you can watch. I don't know if you're on Telegram. <sighs> There are some fucking videos from yeah. this war on, like, in the woods, ground fighting. I've seen them. Heavy, heavy shit. And I don't think people that show up every day at the same Starbucks and then get on the highway and go to their office and repeat every fucking day, I don't think they think of that.